In today's three steps to sketch, we're going to graph the shifted cotangent equation, y equals cotangent of 2x minus pi over 4 minus 2. So we have clear evidence of shifting here in this minus pi over 4 and this minus 2. And so that's how we know we'll use our shifted template here. All right, here's a quick reminder, our template to keep us organized and an outline of the steps. Step one, we're finding all the essential information, really analyzing and breaking everything down so that our graphing process is very easy and we're sure it's accurate. So in step two, we'll lightly plot the base cotangent pattern. And from there, we'll move to step three, we'll work in those shifts, we'll sketch our final graph and then repeat it for as many cycles as we want. All right, so as we start, remember this is the general form of a shifted cotangent equation. Y equals A cotangent of BX minus C plus D. That'll just help us as we're identifying each piece and doing our analysis. So we start with our base graph. A is a coefficient in front of cotangent. And so here it's an understood one. That'll help us get Y coordinates for our curve shaping points in our base pattern. So we'll come back to that in a bit. B is the coefficient of x. We can see clearly here it's a 2. That tells us we should have two cycles that happen between 0 and pi for our graph. That's always the case for cotangent. It also helps us find our period or the length of one horizontal cycle. Remember the formula for that for cotangent graphs is just pi over b. So here our period is pi over 2. All right, now that we have that basic information, Let's go ahead and decide how we'll label our axes, so how to count each tick mark. And it really matters, it makes a difference how you label your horizontal axis. I like to take the period and divide it into four, and that ensures that in step two, as I plot my first pieces of base pattern, they'll align nicely with those horizontal tick marks. So divide that period by four every single time, and it will give you a nice start for a scale. Um, you can think about it as multiplying by one fourth if that makes it easier. So label your horizontal axis counting by pi over eight for each tick mark. And for your vertical axis, it usually isn't quite as important. One is going to work well in the majority of cases. Just look to that value of A and make sure it makes sense. All right, so now let's pause, moving over to our grid and we're going to label our axes. So start with that horizontal axis, label each tick mark counting by one pi over eight. So we have one pi over eight, 2 pi over 8 reduces to pi over 4, 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8 reduces to pi over 2. Do a quick check here. This should be what your period is, and it is pi over 2, so we're good. All right, that should always happen if you use this method for labeling your axes. All right, so now we're at 5 pi over 8, 6 pi over 8 reduces to 3 pi over 4, 7 pi over 8, and 8 pi over 8 is pi. So I'm going to pause, get the negative side of the horizontal axis labeled, do the same if you're working along with me. Otherwise, we'll pick back up in just a moment. All right, so here's what the fully labeled horizontal axis looks like. And we'll take a quick moment to label our vertical axis, just counting by one. All right, now we can move back to our outline. So we wanna identify our shifts and C over B is going to give us our phase shift. That's another name for a horizontal shift. And we see that that's coming from that bx minus c. Let's make sure we identify these correctly. We have 2x minus pi over 4. So c itself must be pi over 4. Okay. And then we're dividing by b, which we've already said is 2. So dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. And we know that that means we're going to be shifting to the right pi over 8, or that's one horizontal grid unit. So our scale does work really nicely for this as well. All right. Now for D, D is just our vertical shift. We look right out here. It's kind of tacked on at the end. It's negative 2, which means we're going to be moving down two grid units. So right pi over 8 and down 2. Those are our shifts for this equation. All right, before we move on to the actual graphing, let's find the asymptote generating equation. There's a very simple way to do this. All you have to do is take your inputs of your cotangent function. These are your horizontal transformations, and we're going to set them equal to the parent asymptotes of cotangent, which can be given by zero plus pi k. So let's write that out. We're gonna do a little scratch work here. 2x minus pi over four 
equals zero plus pi k, and this is where k is an integer. So effectively, we're going to be taking our vertical lines and applying all of the horizontal transformations to them, and that will give us the final location of our vertical asymptotes. So now that we have the setup, just solve for x. So start by first adding pi over four to both sides. Pi over four only combines with the zero on the right side because pi k is not a like term. So it leaves us two x on the left side equal to pi over four plus pi k. All right, and then we of course divide everything by two. So our final asymptotes equation is x equals pi over eight that's pi over 4 divided by 2 plus pi over 2k. All right, and notice pi over 2 is our period. We should have an asymptote once a period, so that's just another way to check yourself for accuracy. All right, so plug in a few values for k here. It'll help you know where your asymptotes are supposed to fall for your final graph. So, of course, when k is 0, that's a pretty easy one. We should have an asymptote at pi over 8. Let k equal 1, and when you... Simplify and combine, just get a little common denominator there, you'll see you should have another asymptote at five pi over eight. Let k equal negative one, same thing, common denominator, simplify. We should have another asymptote happening at negative three pi over eight. So this is a great way to quickly find the asymptotes for an equation of cotangent. Um, and it also is great because as you're graphing at the end, you, like I said, you know where these asymptotes should be. All right, all the analysis is pretty much done. We're ready for step two, where we're going to lightly, or I'll do light blue, um, we're going to plot our base pattern. And remember for cotangent, that's just starting on the y-axis with your vertical asymptote. You have your upper curve shaping point, then an x-intercept, then your lower curve shaping point. So here we go, lightly marking, start on the y-axis here with an asymptote. Your first curve shaping point happens at your first horizontal tick mark, and to get the y-coordinate, simply look to your value of a. All right, remember we're marking lightly here. This is on our final graph. Okay, we have an x-intercept or zero at the next horizontal tick mark moving to the right, so that's at pi over four. And then your final point in the base pattern will be at three pi over eight, just that next or third horizontal tick mark to the right. To get the y-coordinate, just take the opposite value of a. All right, so you can see one loose cycle here of cotangent, and this is our unshifted graph. Now that we have that, it's going to be really easy to shift. So on to step three, let's shift. Remember we're moving each of these features or points right pi over eight and down two. So the vertical asymptote's only affected by that move of right pi over eight, that's one horizontal grid unit. So I'm marking my final graph in green here. Okay, take your upper curve shaping point, move it right pi over eight, down two, one, two. Here's our first final point. Take that original x-intercept, move it right pi over eight, down two. Final curve shaping point, right pi over eight, or one grid unit, and down two. And let's sketch in that cotangent curve. Here is one cycle of our graph. Now, since trig graphs are periodic or cyclic, all we have to do is take this pattern and repeat it for as many cycles as we want. So let's first go to the right. Here's an asymptote at five pi over eight. Remember, that's one of the asymptotes we predicted. That was when k is equal to one. And then we'll put our three points. Sketch in our curve. Here's another cycle. Move the other direction, just work backwards. So there's our y-intercept. And asymptote, it's at negative three pi over eight, just like we predicted. That's when k is negative one in that asymptotes equation. Okay, if you don't like working backward, you can always count one, two, three, four um, grid units horizontally away, because we know there are four pieces in this pattern. Put your vertical asymptote there. Um, you probably can guess that's what asymptote you should get from the equation here, if you let k equal to negative two, and then plot your three points. All right, and you've got four really nice cycles of your cotangent graph here. So hopefully this method really helps you keep everything organized um, and gives you a solid template to graph shifted cotangent graphs. Um, a lot more links are going to be posted in the video description, so check those out. And don't forget to subscribe so you have this bookmarked for when you need it later. Thanks for watching.